Welcome to Off the Cuff, where the headlines come to life. The Wayne County Sheriff's Department is an integral part of keeping communities safe. And today we have the Chief of Jails and Courts, Robert Dunlap, with us. Good and afternoon. we have Chief Mike Jafer, who is primarily in charge of the operations of the Wayne County Sheriff's Department as well as street enforcement right? That's correct. And we are proud of both of these men. They are in the forefront of basically keeping community safe. Welcome to Off the Cuff, gentlemen. It's an honor to have you here with us today. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Chief, and you you, you just were bestowed the honor um, of Chief uh, in, in October, October and is. something uh, to be very, very proud of. You've done a phenomenal, magnificent job since then. Um, and you've been in law enforcement for over 24 years. That's correct. Quite a, quite a history. Uh, so as Chief of Operations um, and Street Enforcement, um, what is your main focus um, in terms of Wayne County? So I'm on the Street enfor Enforcement side, which uh, entails uh, the ro Road Patrol. You see them Sheriff, Deputies on the Streets. Um, those uh, cars, they fall under my division. You'll see um, the ones we try to avoid at all costs yeah, yeah. when you're driving. Yes and no, but yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, Marine Division. A, a lot of folks don't uh, uh, are not aware of the fact that we uh, patrol the waterways from Gross Point to Gross Hill, uh, Belleville Lake, uh, uh, Boulder Safety. We have well, people that don't wear their life jackets know that you're out there patrolling. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. And uh, we we have a, a very active dive team in the Marine Division where we'll get called out. Uh, if there's a emergency situation in the water, which happens often, we have a um, um, an, an the, the mount. The mounted, yep. The horses, the horses are very popular are amongst all communities. We do our best to uh, make all requests around the county because they're very popular at festivals and specifically when the weather gets warm. Uh, they're uh, up and uh, up and down Heinz Drive every so often. The uh, um, sergeant in charge over there will bring them out and they'll patrol Heinz Drive on the horse. I've you know. seen them before. Yeah. Now, now do you do you disperse them throughout Wayne County? Like in, like would you go to Belleville? Would you go to Abs those kinds Absolutely, of and it's, it's request-based, of course. Right. Um, if not, we primarily handle the parks, Wayne County Parks, but uh, we get many requests throughout the county. And uh, for the most part, we are able to uh, assist with them requests. Uh, so, you know, that's the operations side. It's enforcement. You have narcotics enforcement, um, morality enforcement. Uh, we have a special response team that's very active right. for emergency situations. Great. I want to talk to talk talk to each of those in, in, in just a few minutes as well. Um, chief Dunlap, uh, you are the chief of jails and courts, and um, that's that's huge in Wayne County at this at this point. Um, and the conversation has been has been ongoing. Um, we have three different uh, jails, um, three different divisions, and uh, we have a, a, a jail um, that's a little bit newer. Um, but the 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 conversation of um, the conditions in the jail has been really huge um, in regards to Wayne County and, and, and in Metro Detroit. Um, how do you how do you address that, and what is what is your your, your position in in trying to make those challenges um, a reality in terms of making things better? So, as you said, we have <coughs> three jails in the Wayne County uh, correction system, and uh, I put it like this: uh, How do we address it? We draw our energy off the strength of the officers, the resolve of the officers. They are the heart and soul of this agency. Well the officers that are deployed to the jails and courts. Uh, the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, like any other department around this country, is understaffed. Uh, we have a hard time recruiting people. We have over 700 people assigned to the jails and courts who work on average uh, 16 hour days, maybe two or three times a week. So and what's, what's the proportion of jail mates and so we have an average daily population of about 1700 inmates in the jail and we have uh, approximately 750 that's out on tether 
And the three jails are uniquely different. The oldest jail, Jail Division Two, downtown, built in uh, 1929. We call it a linear direct facility, which requires uh, a lot more staffing than Jail Division Three, where we would staff uh, four to 64 people on average, four officers to 64. At Jail Division Three, is one and a half to 64. Jail Division One. It's five to sixty-four. So when you, so so are they are they assigned to a specific division in terms of jails, depending on what the what the what the crime is or, or what they've done, or is it just a, a random kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, so the way the jail system work is we look at every person that is booked into the jail. We look at the crime that they are accused of. We look at uh, their criminal background, whether or not they have a criminal history things like height and weight, and we classify them. Uh, height and weight. Height and weight, uh, age, all of those are factors into how we house people. I think a lot Health. of people in the public might think, well, they go to jail and just lock them up. No, we have a duty to make sure that we're putting, with, putting them with people who are similar in terms of what they're accused of right. to they are. Okay, all right. We, we had a little conversation off camera in regards to tethering and um, uh, our jails are definitely overcrowded. I mean, that, that, that goes without saying, unfortunately. Um, and tethering is, is definitely an option um, to that. Uh, but, but how is that decided? And I know that's decided in regards to the courts, but um, how do you classify, you know, who gets tethered? Um, you know, who is going to be, uh, you know, watched, you know, more closely. I know you have a GPS that, that, that shows the tether and where they are, but how do you classify that and, and how do you make sure that, you know, you, you, you observe that, you know, on a continuous level? We, we have one of the most successful tether programs, I believe, in the country. We have 750 people on tether right now. And what does that mean for Wayne County? We're saving the county an average of about $30 million a year by putting people on tether and opposed to keeping them in the jail. But the people that get on tether, that's decided by the judge. Right. Our, our only involvement in it is enrolling them in our tether program where and we- surveillance. Right, we uh, assign them to a monitor. They wear a strap with a box on their ankle. And we could, uh, you know, know where they're at at all times uh, to the accuracy of maybe about five feet of their actual position, 24 hours around the clock. And so we have a staff of about 24 people that are assigned to monitor those 750 people on tether. The decision on who gets on tether, that's made by the judges. In the courts. Correct. The court. and, and you really, you, you, can you make recommendations or say, uh -uh, I don't well, think so? Well, certainly, <laughs> certainly there are recommendations that could be made. If there is a person in the jail who uh, their health is, you know, of such poor condition that, you know, to further keep them in jail would be a further harm to them. We can make recommendations to the judges and say, hey, this is someone, depending on the type of crime they're accused of uh, committing, whether or not they're sentenced, and we can take all that information, make a recommendation to the judge to maybe put them on tether. Chief Mike, um now, when, when I think of the Wayne County Sheriff's Department, I think of it as an umbrella kind of um, thing over, you know, all the other police departments, but you explained it to me a little bit differently. So, so how, does, how does that actually work in terms of Wayne County Sheriff's Department and all the, 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 the police stations within our different cities? It's, it's more about jurisdiction. So um, local agency has a jurisdiction, for example, Dearborn Heights police officer has a jurisdiction in the city of Dearborn Heights where a deputy sheriff would have jurisdiction countywide and um, be, will be able to enforce laws amongst the whole county, 43 cities, largest county in the state. Uh, the sheriff, you know, Sheriff Benny Napoleon and all elected sheriffs have a very special power that's constitutional. Um, it's an awesome power that goes back to the 1800s. Um, so, you know, as far as uh, umbrella, some l l individuals don't understand that we, as police officers, deputy sheriffs, have the same authority. We just have a larger jurisdiction. 
So that makes sense. Absolutely, and and we, we talked about um, the surveillance in e-course and 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 possibly in in Inkster, where you're a support system to those different um, yeah. So um, cities. Yeah, we, we'll get um, you know. If I had a meeting yesterday with the chief of police, along with Sheriff Benny Napoleon. Uh, with the Angster Police Chief, and you know they're looking for assistance, and we're in the process of coordinating uh, um, assistance, and we're going to make it a priority to assist them specifically with the uh, summer months coming up here close, and that's what we do. We have a uh, agreement with Ecors Housing, and our guys are there working and making sure that them folks that live in the housing uh, areas are safe. Uh, we're a backbone to the E-Course Police Department. Um, you know, at one time we were primary in Highland Park uh, until you know Highland Park got uh, their finances sure. together, and right. now they got their own police department again. So right. you know, we're we're a, definitely a, a support. So you're there to pick up the pieces and make sure everybody's sort of operating the way that they need to in a well, capacity. Absolutely, we're we're a support system, and uh, Sheriff Napoleon has been adamant about assisting anytime a an agency or a city asks or requests for assistance. We have a very active reserve division. Right now, as the, the weather gets uh, nicer, we'll get requests across this county because everyone's having a festival. And we need to assist them with manpower. And our reserve division, uh, they do a phenomenal job with um, assisting and supplementing our um, police officers uh, on the details. You know, just really quick, um, if you wanted to be a reservist, what do you do? Do you actually, have to go through what kind of training do you yeah, have? Yeah, so we're starting actually it's May 17th. This, we're starting a new class. Uh, okay. Yeah, it'll be a, a 10 week course. Uh, it's the uniform division, and uh, you, unfortunately, it's filled, but you can apply to the Wayne County Sheriff's Office. You can go online to Sheriff's Connect and apply for a reserve deputy. Do you need to have any prior? Training or you, you, history or no no we'll we'll do the training we'll train you oh. yeah we'll train you that no doubt like yeah we can, <laughs> <laughs> so we can use some females I'd love to yeah. I really really yeah. I'd love to we also It'd have really a, cool. uh, a a cert um, class that uh, is a uh, um, plain clothes yes, division I'm familiar with that yeah mm -hmm. so what we do is we we uh, send you through our sheriff's program and then we send you, send you through the cert program and you become a, uh, a community emergency response team sheriff reserve officer so a lot of them will assist us with the Detroit fireworks because they you know they need all the manpower possible angels night in the city of Detroit uh, we may we have uh, EMTs that are um, trained and we have doctors which is pretty cool Absolutely. so our narcotics team will go on a raid we'll have an EMS truck right behind us and we'll have two doctors on staff just in case God forbid one of our guys, you know, gets hit in the line of duty. So it's it's a uh, they do a great job. Our reserve division is very active, and, and they do a great job for us. And 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 you 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 hit my next um, my next topic in terms of narcotics and and that division, uh, the opioids, the things that are just coming out um, of 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 our different cities and what the kids are getting their hands on. There's something called flaca. Is that yeah, is that? Correct. I mean, I watched a video regarding that, and I mean that you, that just makes you a deranged person. So, I mean, what's happening on the streets with that, and you know, what is what is what is your role? I mean, what do you? That's a ch that's a huge challenge. I mean, and 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 I don't see an end in sight. It's a huge challenge, and it, it affects both sides of yes, our area. Absolutely. It affects the jails. It affects the uh, street enforcement side. You know, unfortunately, we enforce it. You take someone to jail that's either on them or dealing them. Then Chief Dunlap will have to deal with individuals that are now detoxing. Uh, detoxing. Custody care. Yep. And, and you know, detox is, is very hard for Ugly. individuals that have been on Ugly. drugs for a long time. Absolutely. It's a ma major problem today. Uh, we need to get a grip on, on this situation. It's gotten to a point where um, these prescription drugs are leading to heroin. And you're, you know, this heroin epidemic is becoming a major issue. We see it. We see it every day on the streets. My uh, sergeant called me yesterday. He's telling me about this heroin house in a city that is just super busy. So you know, <laughs> you stand in line, kind of thing. It's eh? unfortunate, it really is. It's a sad situation, and you know, as parents, we really got to keep our eyes open because it's it can happen to anybody. It's anywhere, and it's not just in you know, it's 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 everywhere. Well, one of the important things that Sheriff Napoleon would say: we can't arrest our way out of the problem. Right. So 
one of the things that Sheriff Napoleon has done that is sort of different from a lot of counties is he has identified money in this budget to do what we call residential treatment for individuals who are arrested on low-level offenses and brought to the jail. Leaving the jail, they can go to a treatment program to hope, hopefully help deal with their problems outside of the jail and prevent them from coming back. Through education, I mean, that, that's, Education, that's so counseling, training, sure. you know, uh, job skills, personality skills, those type of things. So, Chief Mike was just saying that you have to deal with, with that brunt once they come into the, uh, into the jail and, and the detox process is, is definitely horrific. So what kind of facilities do you have? I mean, what kind of backup do you have um, that will help you to deal with these, uh, these individuals and then get them processed, basically? Because they can't be, I, I'm assuming they can't be in the jail with everybody else because of that process. Yeah, one of the things that I say a lot when I'm out in community is the Wayne County Jail is one of the largest community mental health treatment centers in the state. We have a unit yes. at Jail Division One where we set aside 120 beds just to deal with people who are mentally ill or have mental challenges. And one of the things that we often see is there are co-occurrences of mental illness and substance abuse. And so one of the ways that we deal with it, jail medical is not under the authority or the umbrella of the sheriff's department. It is under the authority and umbrella of the Wayne County Executive's Office. And the Wayne County Executive Office has recently bought in a new jail health provider called Correct Care Solutions. And they're implementing a lot of new programs that are specific to opioid addictions. And so over the past, uh, they've been in place since uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, so, far, so far, we've been pretty successful in combating some of the challenges that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. So I would almost think that um, pouring money more into our mental health uh, you know, programs makes more sense than you know, trying to build more jails to house the mentally ill. And so I, I don't know if that conversation has you know stuck yet? Um, you yes. know, I know uh, the the Detroit Mental Health Authority um, with with Tom Watkins. He's he's done some amazing things, but I think once that was eradicated, you know, through through one of our governor, governors who will remain <laughs> nameless, um, that you know, I think that really uh, increased the population in jails. I think that's pretty much the philosophy of Sheriff Napoleon as well. One of the things that Sheriff Napoleon always says, jail is a place for people who are dangerous, right. okay, that we need to protect the community from. Not people that we're mad at because, oh, uh, they broke out a window and you know, they're a nuisance to the community, or not because they're sick. And that's one of the reasons why the sheriff, being the person that he is, found a way to fund programs that would provide assistance to inmates as they leave the jail to have that treatment in the community outside of jail to hopefully put them on the right track or at least point them in the right direction of getting the help they need. Well thought out. I mean, that, 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 that makes sense as, as a solution rather than just a Band-Aid, basically. Yes. Um, you are also in charge of the morality issue as well and in the, in, in the issue of prostitution on the streets. What are, what are you seeing? Are you seeing an increase in, in that kind of thing? And I know we, we had a huge conversation on the human trafficking issue. Um, so that has to be very prevalent yeah. in, in what you're seeing out there. Yeah, it's, it's prevalent, and, uh, you know, we do a lot of work in the city of Detroit, and, um, you know, like I said, um, Inkster was asking for some help here with those type issues. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's pretty similar across the board, and both Chief and I grew up together in the city of Detroit and work in the streets, and it hasn't changed. The individuals that are going after the Johns are normally from outside of the community, and, and if it's I gave you the truth. stats, mm -hmm. I, I actually looked at some stats about three weeks ago. 75% of the individuals that we either get a site or take to jail in relation to this crime morality are outside of the jurisdiction we are enforcing. They're all, yeah, so if it's the city. So they come from outside to do correct. their business. Oh, absolutely, they, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, 
and then you'll be professionals. You have individuals that are, you know, well-to-do citizens, or at least you think, uh, professionals. Yeah, so it's definitely a problem. And then, you know, you also have the um, drug abusers that unfortunately um, get into that arena. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's, it's a problem. We're doing our best to combat it. Of course, we're, you know, a little piece of the pie. Like the chief said, we are understaffed. And um, we just brought back the enforcement um, less than two years ago, and our guys are doing a great job. But we're hiring every day. Yeah, we're hiring now, by the way. Every day. Call. Recruitment, recruitment, yes. yeah. recruitment, recruitment. I think. What are we looking to hire? 150 officers. At right least now? 150 officers. And what is the background? For, I mean, I think that a lot of a lot of places require right. like a associate's degree or even a bachelor's well, degree. Well, in, in, in Wayne uh, County, fortunate enough for me as it was when I started in the Detroit Police Department over. 30 plus years ago, all you have to have is a high school diploma, no felony convictions, uh, less than six points on your driving record in the past two years, and you can apply. And you have to be, of course, 18 years of age. Well, that's wonderful. I think there's a lot of young men that would that would that would want to have a, a career in, in that. Well, kind I of think thing. it certainly applied to us. Uh, we both started 18, 19 years old, and. And you look know, where you are now. Very blessed. Now <laughs> absolutely. we're chiefs of the Wayne uh, County Sheriff's Office. No, absolutely. Um, you know, going back a little bit to the morality issue in terms of um, human trafficking, and you said something. You said that it's the same vision or the same kind of streets now as it was then. Is there yeah. anything in place? Are we are we looking at this as, as a real issue that we need to you know crack down on? So uh, I, I would say it's the same theme, Correct. same theme. So you have the same concept when I was a rookie out there working undercover as it is today in terms of the individuals that are are involved in this crime. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, is it a sickness? Is it a medical condition? I think uh, part of it is, you know, and that's one of the things so, that we see. You know, <coughs> possibly, possibly. Yeah, possibly. It's it's you know it's it's running rapid in terms of the prostitution thing, but then when you look at the young girls that are being you know brought in in terms of human trafficking and being used and you know brought brought in on on false you know auspices or I'm going to make you a star or, you know I'm going to I'm going to put you to work or you're going to do this or what have you and it, and that has really been a huge epidemic a across the board. I think it's socioeconomical uh, issues that contribute to that certainly. I think you said the key word, look, I'm going to put you to work. And the majority of what people want is to be able to work, provide a living for themselves and their families. And unfortunately, because of certain challenges that are, you know, maybe related to their social demographics, they oftentimes resort to things that are not the most positive no, things. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's, that's definitely a continuing conversation. What has been in the news is the internet takeover and the ransoms that have been asked for to deplete or to get rid of a, a, of a virus on your computer. And so my husband mm -hmm. called me and said, be careful when you open up your computer. This is something about Waycry, or I, I don't know what it was called, but it was, it was a, a funny name. Um, I get them calls. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've been a vic well, attempted victim I just I get a kick out of the way they do it. You know, they call you, <laughs> go to your computer, and they want you to, you know, press Type a certain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 too bad. You know, we had one of the um, internet crime. We actually were the, the Wayne County Sheriff's Office was the pioneer on internet crimes, and uh, we were uh, blessed to be part of major investigations that result resulted in. Taken down some convictions, convictions sure. and career criminals that were hiding behind a computer. Unfortunately, budget cuts knocked that right mm, out. Not good. So <laughs> we're, you know, hoping and uh, praying that you know we can uh, bring that unit back because we get that call every day. The sheriff gets that call from uh, citizens throughout this county asking for assistance in relation to internet crime. So so what do you do? I mean, say somebody was attacked with that with that virus and, you know, they're 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 basically 
they're beholden to whoever's holding all their information and basically all our lives these days are in our computers so who do you call well you know what I would tell the citizens is would you buy a house over the telephone sight unseen for three hundred thousand dollars no so why would you transact any business over the internet sight unseen uh, you know one of the things is don't follow the commands of the people at the other end of the device. Stop, notify your local police department. Well, this particular virus, I mean, it's going across the, na I mean, it's in right. Asia, it's in Australia, so you ask who it's who in you would all call. these so different places. So it's like, you know, it's, it's on the computer, right? So, so we you had a task force with the Michigan State Police, and the Michigan State Police still does have an internet crime unit. So you can get a hold of them. Um, Michigan State Police. Yeah, Michigan State Police still okay. does, does have that unit. But I am very optimistic that we're going to get our internet crimes back one day. I hope so because yeah. right now everything, everything is internet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, correct. I'm, yeah. I'm even hesitant to buy anything off the internet because I don't want to put my, my, you know, information yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but that's the trend, and you yeah. see all these stores closing because everything is going into internet, which is hugely mm -hmm. unfortunate. But you know, with, with, with that kind of traffic comes Absolutely. more crime. And so Absolutely. I, you know, we, we've got only a few more minutes and I really want to end this on a positive note. I know um, the Sheriff's Department um, does a whole bunch of wonderful stuff with seniors and with, with, the, with youth programs. Um, and you have a golf outing coming up and that was Tuesday, June 10th? If Tell it, us about it's, that. It's uh, June 13th. Oh, 13th. Yeah, June 13th. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's 13th, guys. June not 13th. It's, a, it's actually here in Dearborn Heights, Warren oh, Valley okay. Golf oh, Course. Oh, it's in our and backyard. Yeah, the Wayne County Youth and Senior uh, Fund is a group of individuals, um, citizens, business owners, etc., that volunteer their time, and it's 100% uh, nonprofit, no payroll. Every penny goes to the needy seniors and children of this county. So if there's any group that uh, you believe is worthy of a donation, please uh, feel free. Uh, Darlene Nero is our, um, the contact with the Sheriff's Office. You can call our uh, regional dispatch and we can get you in contact with Darlene if you ever have any group that would be in need of that. That's it's a wonderful. great group. Absolutely, and I know that they provide seniors with cell phones too if they need to call 911 and those kinds That's of things. That's correct. That's correct. Absolutely. Well, Wayne County Sheriff's Department, everyone, you represent very, very well. Thank you, Chief, thank for you, being on Off the Cuff, thank and you. Thank, thank you for thank being on Off the Cuff. And I hope you found this very informative. I know I did. Thank you very much for joining us. This has been Off the Cuff. Have a great